Right here, almost two years ago, I introduced you to Dremel CNC, my 3D printed CNC machine that became insanely popular. I really never expected this project to be so popular, and I think it's right time and also the right place to introduce you to my new, bigger CNC project. Just like with the Dremel CNC, this will be a small series about building the wool machine and here is the first part about parts and design will prepare everything for the assembly and probably the second part of this series will be about the assembly process but right now I'll move to the workshop because I don't have enough space and also enough tools to make this project here. So here I have most of the parts, but still not all of them for this project. And I will put some links in the description to those parts. But keep in mind that this project is still work in progress. I'm not really sure what will happen in next video and once I will start assembling everything. It basically may change a lot. So those parts in the description are parts that I actually have right now. But maybe in the future I will use different parts. And once this project will be ready, I will create a table just like I did with the Dremel CNC, with all of the parts, with proper quantities and everything, uh, so that it will be easy for you to reproduce this project. And right now, let me unpack all of that, and I will show you what I have here. So here are the parts and let's start with aluminum profiles. Here is, here is the monster, that's 20 by 80, 1 meter long aluminum profile. I have two of these and I will cut both of them to 600 millimeters. And here is uh, this one, 20 by 40, 666 millimeters long. Again, two of these. And here I have the 600 millimeter, 20 by 40, two of these. Let's move on to the ball screws. Those are basically just like lead screws in the Dremel CNC. Here is trapezoidal lead screw, but as you can see, or actually here, there is a little bit of backlash problem going on in the trapezoidal lead screw. There is no such problem in the ball screw because this is just a super, super precise lead screw, uh, but at the same time, it's really, really expensive. Let's move on. Here we have the linear rails. Again, two of these 600 millimeters long and two of these 650 millimeters long. I also have those super short linear rails here. That's probably 250 millimeters, something like this. And additional 12 carriages. I, I don't really know what's the name of that, but I have 12 of these additionally. And I will put those on the linear rails. Here I have the couplers, definitely too many of them. I just need four, but I have more of them just in case. Uh, and of course the corner bracket, that's also what I'm going to use in this project. And here we have parts that are cut out of steel on the laser. 8mm thick steel cut on the laser, that's pretty interesting. And those parts look really, really cool. Let's actually talk a little bit more about those steel parts, because those are pretty interesting. I found few companies in Poland that wanted to do something like this. And I sent them a message with my files and asked the price for this set. And one company told me almost, I think, five times more than the company that I end up ordering those parts in. So we have to be careful and search for a lot of different companies in order to find one uh, that is good. But here is one problem. 
Uh, they didn't let me know that holes that I have right here are probably too small and the laser can't cut something like this because this piece should be attached right here so I don't have holes right here so I will probably drill that simply with a drill which is not super precise because you know laser is always a lot more precise than a drill but well I will fix that later in my design and yeah the quality of the parts is pretty nice I mean if you have a plasma cutter you can try to do something like this but I'm afraid that plasma cutter is not precise enough uh, to cut the small holes and to cut it precisely. I'm also thinking about selling those steel parts so I'll just order all of them and maybe if someone will be interested uh, you would be able to buy that online. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that this is a good idea. Of course I will do it once the project will be ready and I will know that everything is fine with it. Uh, yeah, cutting steel on the laser is a new experience for me but it's really fun. It's really nice that you can cut steel, 8mm steel that's pretty thick just with a laser, so simply with quite nice quality. So now I just need to clean those because as you can see on my hands, those parts are really dirty. It's just about the right time to start counting mistakes in this design and here is number one. You have two versions of this, MGN12 and MGN-C. In the design I use the C version but in reality I bought the H version and the difference between those is just 5mm. Those holes right here are 20mm apart and in my design those are 15mm apart and that's a big problem but with this simple 3D printed adapter I should be able to attach this right here and drill those holes in proper place. Parts are super super clean now and that's very important if you want to paint those and I really recommend painting them to protect them from rust and to do this you have to use a proper paint. I will use the Hammerite, whatever that is. I will now just paint this probably a few layers of paint just to make it look nice and also protect it properly. That's it. In the meantime, I received the package with stepper motors, so let's take a look at what we have here. Always when I'm working on a bigger project like this one, I have my laptop with me so that I can check everything before cutting, because it's better to measure twice and cut once than the other way around. Uh, that way I can just make sure that everything that I'm doing is correct and that there are no mistakes. In this case I'm just checking uh, how to cut the aluminum profiles because I still have to wait for this paint to dry, the first layer of paint. So in the meantime I will cut the aluminum profiles to the proper length and from what I see in the design I just need to cut the biggest, the 20 by 80 uh, to 600 millimeters, that's 60 centimeters. And for that I will use, I will use this saw. It's definitely not perfect for cutting aluminum, it's really good for wood, but it was quite cheap and with this one you have a perfectly perpendicular cut, thanks to those guides. You can even use something like this, but with this one you never know. But if you can order professionally cut aluminum profiles to a proper length that you need, always do that because it's just easier and you have a really perfect cut and you don't have to worry about that. But also this solution is good enough.
after three days of painting and multiple layers of paint, those parts are ready. And it really took a lot of time to paint those, but I think it was totally worth it. The result is just amazing. As you can see, this is not a really smooth surface and that's called hammer blue because it's not really smooth. It has a little bit of texture to it. And that's something I really wanted to have right here. And here I have a new package. Probably here I have the stepper motor drivers for the stepper motors. So let's open it. So here are the stepper motor drivers, definitely a lot bigger than the ones that I used with the Dremel CNC. But those are a little bit more professional, those can handle bigger current, are quite easier to attach, you have a big heat sink at the bottom. And also you have screw terminals, and screw terminals makes it kind of easy to connect professionally because you can easily use something like this on the cables and then connect that to the screw terminals. But on the other hand, uh, to the Arduino it's not that easy to connect because you don't have screw terminals on the GRBL shield, so that will be kind of hard. But I think I will just design my own shield with screw terminals that will be compatible with GRBL and maybe eventually even create my own board with Atmega and bootloader of the Arduino burned to the Atmega uh, so that the whole board will be actually a controller for the CNC machine. I think that's a really good idea for the project. That's what I have as for now when it comes to the electronics, just stepper drivers and motors. And the last thing to do in this video, in the first part of Indie Mill project, is to actually create threads in those aluminum profiles right here and on the other side, uh, so that I will be able to attach those like this to those plates. Let's do it. And that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, that was quite a lot of work to prepare all of the parts for assembly, but finally in the next episode of Indie Mill Project we will be able to assemble everything and maybe even run the machine, but I think that will be the subject for third part of this project. I hope you enjoyed it, if you have any questions leave them in the comments, also if you have any ideas leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to don't miss new episodes of this project and also my other projects. And that's it, thanks for watching, happy making, bye!